All right, guys, we're going to change the fuel filter on an E90-335D with an M57 engine. The fuel filter is located on the second under tray. I did not remove the first under tray. You can access it from the second. There's a pivot point right here. Um, I didn't show that. It's pretty straightforward. Remove all the 8 millimeter bolts and uh, slide the panel to the side, which will give you access to what we see right here. Um, from there, it's two things that you need to do. You need to loosen the hose clamp right here, and you need to pull this clip from here and pull. There's going to be a little gasket inside, like a rubber gasket. That needs to be replaced with the new filter. Take note of the arrow. Also take note that this uh, module here has a pokey yoke, which is basically a, an aligning feature that um, will help you only put it in one direction. From there, there's a 13 millimeter right there and a Torx to remove the, uh, the piece altogether so you can slide this onto your new unit. Um, you're gonna lose a little bit of diesel and try your best to minimize the diesel loss so that way when you're purging your fuel line through the, through the OBD, um, you don't have to do as much because you won't have lost as much diesel. I'll do my best, but I can't promise that I'll be uh, efficient in it. Either way, um, let's get started. First, let's loosen the hose clamp. Okay, push that all the way to the back. Then we've got the hose clamp over here or the, the metal clamp over here. Just pry that up to loosen. You can try and take it off a couple different ways. You can use a screwdriver. Uh, this really isn't the tire, uh, technically the correct application, but I'm gonna do my best here to uh, try and remove it this way. Looks like it's working. Okay, now that it's loose, we're gonna point this down into a bucket below. Don't dump this to the ground. In the meantime, also loosen that 13 millimeter up here for the bracket. And it'll help you kind of wiggle things around here. From the new fuel filter, take that plastic protective cover and be prepared to uh, put it on the unit right now when we're about to drop it. Get ready. Okay. Not too bad. Sorry, dumb mistake here. Uh, take the clip all the way out. Now we've got that out of the way. Let's get our new filter. Notice the direction. We're gonna take the new gasket that it comes with and insert it into place. You're gonna to want to take off that T25 right there. So you can put it on the new filter. Slide the rubber sleeve off. Right here. Slide the protective sleeve in place. Make sure the orientation is still right. Next, get ready here to put this in place, just like that. Get your clip. Lock it into place. I'm going to be replacing the hose clamp with something a little bit better. Take the five and a half millimeter socket right here and start tightening up the hose clamp. Get your T20 fastener and fasten the two seams back together. Well, unfortunately, somehow the uh, recording decided to just stop in the middle of the video. Uh, so 
What you guys didn't see was eventually me putting the T20 back in place, tightening it with the rubber gasket in place, tightening the 13 millimeter bolt, tightening the hose here. I used the BMW uh, fuel, uh, fuel hose um, clamp. This was a five and a half millimeter bolt. The clip here on the back end of the module to the filter, along with the gasket that was supplied, tightened and in place. And that's it. Next, we're going to prime the system and I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, we wanna plug into the onboard diagnostic system right now. I'm using a Foxwall NT510. Um, you can use something a little bit more advanced, uh, but uh, for the sake of maybe appealing to more people, um, I'm gonna show it on the Foxwall. So um, in the uh, diagnostics, there's a service uh, setting. Just wanna go into that menu and under the diesel uh, sub-menu, you'll see the bleeding of the fuel system here. Now that we've gone through most of the prompts, uh, it's basically saying here the electronic fuel pump is continuously activated in the following steps. Actuation may last for three minutes, so we'll uh, hopefully be able to hear it activate for you guys. Just gotta hit yes. Sorry, it's hard to do this through the screen. Additional faults could be registered by the following actuation. Ignore these faults and delete them at the end of the diagnosis. Okay. You can hear the pump, hopefully. Hopefully you guys can hear that sloshing. Here's the fuel pump right there. Hopefully this actuation test uh, definitely takes care of everything and we're able to start it right up. All right guys, so I screwed up. I forgot to hit record. I was just kind of in the middle of just actually doing it and forgetting to actually record for you guys. Um, so what I did was um, I let the Foxwell finish its priming. And basically when the priming was over, I just went straight to the ignition and I hit start, start it up on the first try no hesitations, no uh, long, um, no long turning over. All we got to do now is put all the panels back together and uh, it's a job done. Obviously the car started, no fault codes were stored, no fault codes on the dash currently. So uh, it's as simple as that. Just take the hose off the front, take the clip off the back, pull out the old filter, put the new filter in, Make sure the gasket that came with the filter is installed and prime your fuel system. If you don't have uh, an onboard diagnostic system that can prime the fuel system for you, um, I've heard that cycling the ignition on and off a couple times can indeed try and do that uh, as a replacement. I can't confirm whether or not that's a good or a bad um, thing and if it actually works, but uh, if that's all you got, give it a try. Try your best not to run the pump dry. That's just not, that's a big no-no. Other than that, uh, good luck everyone. And I will be also um, documenting on my car when I change the filter.